Okay, this last section of polar graphs are the four polar graphs that you're gonna be doing your project over. So we're gonna, in this video, we're gonna go through the four different types, kind of talk about them. At the end, um, you're going to look at some equations and try to identify, and they're gonna check your answers on Schoology, but then after this, you're just working on your polar project. So there is no test this unit, it's just this project. This project will be a major grade. So let's go through these weird polar graphs. So the first one is pronounced a cardioid. That's this like weird fat heart looking shape. The two equations that you'll use are here and here. The only difference is sine and cosine. Cosine would make this on the X axis. Sine would put it on the Y axis. So if you'll look at this cardioid, it's on the negative x-axis, so that means it would have used this equation and there would have been a minus sign in the middle because it was on the left side of the x-axis. The a values are the two numbers that are added and the one of them is in front of the trig. These numbers are where your intersections are. So this will be a and that would be negative a. A also tells us the distance from the pole to the end of the cardioid. This is a distance of 2A. And you'll notice this more whenever you are actually doing the polar project. But the main way you're going to be able to tell a cardioid from any other graph is that these two numbers are going to be the same. And that's cardioid. This next graph is pronounced limason. I know, fancy, right? Now there are three different types of limasons. There is an inner loop. There is a convex. So you'll notice it's kind of like a flat side right here. And then there is a dimple. The dimple graph looks very similar to cardioid. However, the dimple doesn't touch the pole. It goes a little bit past it. Okay. Here are the two equations. Again, the difference is sine and cosine, but the difference between the limason equations and the cardioid equations is that these numbers will not be the same. And we'll have to look at these numbers to decide if it's an inner loop, dimple, or convex. So you're always gonna divide the first number over the second number. If when you divide them, that absolute value of that number is less than one, it's gonna be inner loop. If it's between one and two, it's a dimple. If it's bigger than two, it's a convex. And again, you'll explore this more when you're doing your polar project. But you will wanna pay attention to this when you're taking the homework quiz on Schoology as well as doing work on the other page. So let's leave us on. The next two are my faves because they're the easiest to identify. Like, hi, Rose, it's a flower, fun. The two equations are here and here. It's easy to identify rows because there is no adding or subtracting. It's just a number, sign, a number, theta. So this little n guy is specific to rows. And that number tells us the number of petals. If n is odd number, like three, that's how many petals it has. So if this number is those three, the rows would have three petals. But if n is even, like four, you double that. So if the number was four up here, you would actually have eight petals. Whoa. Okay. And then I'll let you use your project to look at the difference at what happens between when it's sine versus cosine. Ooh, fun. Last one is lemniscuit. This one is really easy to identify because it's the only one that's R squared. So when you see R squared, you know it's lemniscuit and it just makes this like eight shape. You'll look into your project to see the difference at when it's sine versus cosine. But A is the distance from the pole to the end of the pedal. Yeah. And that's the same thing for rows too, sorry. The length of the pedal is that A value, that number in front. Okay, and those are the four weird ones. There are two more that you're going to want to identify on page 13 when you go to practice. There is still 
line like we practiced in the last video and circle. So you get a line when you have theta equals some angle. Like in the last video, we had theta equals 30 degrees or theta equals pi over six. And then it was a circle if you had just r equals a number, like r equals three, or if you had something like r equals a number and then sine theta or a number cosine theta. These were all examples of circles. So these two will also be present on the next page. So go ahead and turn the page. You're going to look at all of those equations and you're gonna label them, whether it's a rose, lemniscate, limason, cardioid, read the instructions because it says, if it's a limason, you wanna name the type. So you wanna divide A and B to see if it says an inner loop, convex, or dimple. And if it's a rose, I want you to tell me the number of petals. So if it's odd, remember it's that number. If it's even, you double it. And then you have a fun little activity on Schoology for your homework grade. And then it's the project, sisters. Bye.